Open space, the term, was actually coined in the early 80s by a gentleman by the name of uh, Harrison Owens. What happened was, and it's a really good story, he, was pu he put on a conference called Organizational Transformation in the early 80s, and for the whole year he went through this whole administration, getting the expert speakers, and it took a lot of his time and a lot of his effort. Then he put a second one on in California, Organizational Transformation, a lot of work, so he went to the bar, sort of to rest and rest his mind, and after the third martini, the story goes, he started thinking, why am I putting myself through all of this? Why not create a space for people to come in based on their energy, their interests, their curiosities, what they want to talk about, create that kind of venue, and just invite them in? And thus the term open space came into effect. So he formalized that word. Now, in my mind, that martini basically got rid of all his education, socialization structures, and just sort of let that natural, intuitive sense come out. Because I really believe the process has been around for 100,000 years. Just think of people sitting around a campfire. And whoever had the biggest grunt, or when people were interested in what they sort of were mentioning in their way, people went, uh, yeah, 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 I want to talk about that. And they got together and they talked about it. I think a lot of uh, Aboriginal people, Native people, throughout the cultures did that. What people are interested, bring it to the party. That's what people talk about around the lunchroom. That's what they talk about around the water cooler. So we could have just called this around the water cooler. So open space is a venue that basically people can come to, talk about their interests, bring forward and create an agenda, their agenda. Spend the time to form small groups and get into either just an open dialogue and explore Switch ideas, their experiences, tell stories, and generate some reflection and some, well, what are the things we got out of that? Or it could be even move towards problem solving. So they bring up an issue that they're interested, they have passion, and they start problem solving about it. But it's up to them. So it's a self-organization, self-organizing, self-creating agenda where people have the energy and the passion to talk about things. And basically that's what we're going to tonight at the BCODN meeting. Um, tonight uh, we've invited BCODN members and non-members in to talk about what they're working on or subjects that they have passion about and make it their meeting. That's open space. So open space is, is basically just another tool in the toolbox of an OD change process practitioner. It's one of the many. And to use it at the right time, at the right place. And I'll give you some examples where I've used it. I've used it in community meetings where diversity comes together and there's complexity of issues. And so they take a, uh, the control and they create their agenda, say over two days or three days. I've used it in leadership learning. In fact, in the 80s, before I heard the term open space, I was working with uh, some executive of an international company. And we were doing that leadership sort of dog and pony show, the program. And I could just tell they were just bored with it because these are very senior management. So I said, well, let's just throw that away. And what do you want to talk about? And we created an agenda for two days. And they said it was the best leadership learning they've ever had. So I believe it can be used in many ways in a learning process. Because basically, people are ready to learn based on what they're interested in. Uh, they have ownership in it and it effectively engages them. This is a very good tool for engagement. Continuous improvement, frontline people. Engage them in what they see and what uh, they're interested in and their passions around uh, continuously improving their functions on the job and their performance on the job. Uh, I think it's a cousin to appreciative inquiry, inquiry and I've used both of them at the same time. Let's see, management development, supervisory development, team building. Very, very good because it gives a voice to people. I've used it in, uh, in line with them understanding what kind of team they want to build and what do they need to do in order to build that team in order to enhance performance and get something out of it. So engaging them in a way that gives them a venue 
to them explore around being a team rather than again having the expert come in. I've used it in areas of learned helplessness and this is a very good tool for learned helplessness where people won't take on responsibility and they've gone through a culture or climate that has been very authoritative and very hierarchy because they start experiencing their voice around their and they may not be the you know come out with a lot but the second time and the third time, they're there. They show up. They now know they have a voice and it's a safe environment. And that's part of the dynamic of open space, have a safe emerging environment. And let's talk about emergence for a while. Well, you bring people together and give them a safe venue, their ideas will emerge solutions and avenues that probably weren't talked about before. So I use it within a paradigm of emergence, especially in complex adaptive systems, systems that are they want to transform from the hierarchy into adaptive systems where they're breaking down the barriers the old barriers of traditional hierarchies roles and status and power and basically they become people it's an amazing thing with street gangs I've used it where basically they've had and unions union management relations they got stories 20 years ago that they won't let go of and they've identified people and put them into a framework of which they're the enemies and they have to have conflict in order to get what they want. And it breaks down there and it's an amazing thing that happens. They start seeing them as people again. And the dialogue opens. And you facilitate that open dialogue. And people start moving their own mental models and their perceptions of the world and themselves to another place. And that's emergence. And that's real change. So it's, we're bringing in, I'm going to use some technical terms, single loop and double loop learning. Both in a learning thing as well as a facilitative dialogue around a venue of open space. Simple as that. And here's, I wrote down some other applications, okay? Community developer, uh, corporate style retreats and symposiums. It's amazing. I work with uh, organizations like the BCODN that have members and they have these experts come in, which is great. But finding that balance because you got so many members with so much experience and so much value to share amongst themselves that a lot of members or organizations forget about their members have a lot of things to bring to the party. So let's look at another example. Conferences. Just if you want to engage people, allow them to engage the way they want to engage. It's an amazing thing that happens. So there's some examples. So we're going to talk now about some of the basic principles of open space. We're coming together in such a venue. Um, I wrote, and I didn't know I was going to talk on this, so I did write some notes down because, you know, I'm getting old and I can't remember everything. But I think it's the primary form of democracy. Democracy is a principle. Um, it's it, because people have that venue to talk about what they want to talk about. Not following the leader, not mandated, not a preformed construct, but basically a democracy where they have that power to be and to listen and to share. Um, letting go is a, a is a principle. Letting go of one's mental models, of one's assumptions, of one's beliefs, and feeling safe to explore and to reflect and taking that time and to challenge oneself and challenge others without judgment. So passion. There's another principle. Follow your passions, your curiosities, your interests. That's what's going to get you through life. And what something Susan Guest uh, said a long time ago, and I saw her say it at the Adler School, professional school of something uh, the other about three weeks ago. She said, create your own theories. Listen to yourself. It's based on you. It's not based on a book and it's not based on, on an expert. Follow you because you have it in you. You already have the answers. Just allow yourself to bring those out. And that's how evolution occurs and that's how emergence occurs. I think um, safety, self-organization. There are three change dynamics that over the years that I've, I, I, I embed in all, all the working with clients and designing change process, and that is ownership. So the principle of ownership. When somebody comes with their interest, they own it. Uh, effective engagement. What's the, what's the best way to effectively engage? Is allow people to speak, explore, and listen. And um, the third one is readiness. People are ready to talk. There's an urgency. They talk about what's interesting to them. It's the water cooler effect. That's what you want to allow to happen. And the magic happens. It's amazing. Um, 
complexity, diversity, exploration, being allowed to explore the unknown. I'm big on that because change only happens when you go into the unknown. Other than that, you're putting on new clothes for the emperor. It's the same deal. It just looks different. Somebody wrote a new book. But until you go into the unknown, you feel safe in doing that. In fact, I have my principle of change is when the comfort zone of the unknown is greater than the known, natural change will occur. Think about that for a minute. Living at the edge of chaos is a phrase I love because chaos is a part of change. Chaos is a part of open space. Chaos is a natural part of self-organization. So that's another principle. Allow chaos to happen. It's natural. A lot of organizations, when they hit that wall of chaos, the leaders, I don't know what they're trying to say, they draw back into the status quo of what they know. They want to be protected. Chaos is a natural state of real change. Um, the other principle is your thoughts are worthwhile. You are worthwhile. That's what the world is. So listen to yourself. That's where the real good stuff is. Um, and if you're going to, if you choose to use this tool, believe in the power of the group. Let go of the control of the agenda. Believe in the power of people, especially the power of the group. They'll figure it out. They've been around the block. Some principles of open space that I've learned over the years. So, just to wrap this up here, yeah, just reflect on letting go and, and what's holding us back at times to let go from what we know and maybe explore a little bit into the unknown. Um, Open space is, is, is a good tool. Again, it's a, it's a tool of, uh, for change processes. Um, and you, it's not the panacea for everything. It's like every other tool, the right time, the right place. Add it to your toolbox. Read about it, see, see if you're comfortable in using it, especially uh, what's the value to your clients. I think that's the greatest thing. So thank you uh, for the time. And... Uh, and we're going to begin the open space for BCODN pretty soon, tonight. <laughs>